I know, I know. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying that that's what she's saying. I know, I know. This is just so messed up. I know. Anyway, Julian said that he thinks being friends with uh, Augie is bringing you down. And that for your own good, you need to stop hanging out with him so much. And if you start losing all your old friends, it'll be like a big wake-up call. So basically, for your own good, he's going to stop being your friend completely. Newsflash, I stopped being his friend completely first. Yeah, but he's convinced all the boys to stop being your friend for your own good. That's why nobody's talking to you. Well, you're talking to me. Wait, yeah, well, it's more of a boy thing, she explained. The girls are staying neutral, except Savannah's group, because they're going out with Julian's group. But to everybody else, this, this is really a boy war. I nodded. She tilted her head to one side and pouted like she felt sorry for me. Is it okay that I told you all this? She said. Yeah, of course. I don't care who talks to me or not. I lied. This is all just so dumb. She nodded. Hey, does Augie know any of this? Oh, of course not, at least not for me. And Summer? Well, I don't think so, but look, I better go. And just so you know, my mom thinks Julian's mom is a total idiot. And she thinks that, she says she thinks people like her are more concerned about what their kids' class pictures look like than doing the right thing. And you heard about the photoshopping, right? <sighs> yeah, that was just sick. Totally. And she answered, nodding. And anyway, I better go. And I just wanted you to know what was up and stuff. Well, thanks, Charlotte. Well, I'll let you know if I hear anything else, she said before she went out. She looked left and right outside the door to make sure that no one saw her leaving. I guess even though she was neutral, she didn't want to be seen with me. <laughs> Can you guys believe this junior high drama? I'm just taking a little pause break before we go into the switching tables thing. I mean... That's why I love this story. It shows you guys of what not to do, how not to act, and how, you know, not to be rude and disrespectful, and not to start gossip, rumors, all that stuff is bad. And if you ever hear somebody else coming to you who's normally like a nice person, but they're all of a sudden telling you and talking about somebody else in a bad way or a negative way, or, hey, did you hear what I heard? I heard that blah, blah, blah. Just tell them to stop right there, and you don't want to hear it, and that's not nice to talk about people. So that's how you just stop that because I always say that uh, if somebody's talking about you, I mean to you about somebody else, chances are it won't be long before they're talking about you to somebody else. So you got to stop the gossipers, like stop the gossip right in his step. And that's how you can make a difference going into junior high is you got to stop the gossip and, uh, you know, be bigger than it. Okay, switching tables. The next day at lunch. Stupid me, I sat down at the t table with Tristan, Nino, and Pablo. I thought maybe they were safe because they weren't really considered popular, but they weren't out um, there But they weren't out there playing D&D &D at recess either. And they were sort of in-betweeners. And at first I thought I, was, I scored because they were basically too nice to not acknowledge my presence when I walked over to the table. They all said, hey... Though I could tell they, that they looked at each other. But then the same thing happened that happened yesterday. Our lunch table was called, they got their food, and then they headed toward a new table on the other side of the cafeteria. Unfortunately, Mrs. G, who was the lunch teacher that day, saw what happened and chased after them. That's not allowed, boys, she scolded them loudly. This is not that kind of school, and you get right back to your table. Woohoo! Oh, great. Like that was going to help. Before they, could be, uh, before they could be forced to sit back down at the table, I got up with my tray and walked away really fast. I could hear Miss G call my name, but I pretended not to hear and just kept walking to the other side of the cafeteria behind the lunch counter. Sit with us, Jack. It was summer. She and August were sitting at their table, and they were both waving me over. Why I didn't sit with August the first day of school? Okay, I'm a total hypocrite, I know, and that the very first day of school, I remember seeing August in the cafeteria, and everybody was looking at him, talking about him. Back then, no one used, uh, no one was used to his face or even knew that he was coming to Beecher, so it was just a total shocker for a lot of people to see him there in the first day of school, and most kids were even afraid to get near him. 
So when I saw him going to the cafeteria ahead of me, I knew he'd have no one to sit with, but I just couldn't bring myself to sit with him. I had been hanging out with him all morning long because he had so many classes, to, or we had so many classes together, and I guess I was just kind of wanting a little normal time to chill with other kids. And so when I saw him move to a table on the other side of the lunch counter, I purposely found a table as far away from there as I could find. And I sat down with Isaiah and Luca, even though I'd never met them before. And we talked about baseball the whole time, and I played baseball with them at recess. And they became my lunch table from then on. I heard Summer had sat down with August, which surprised me because I knew for a fact that she wasn't one of the kids that Tushman had talked to about being friends with Augie. So I knew that she was just doing it to be nice and that that was pretty brave, I thought. So now here I was sitting with Summer and August and they were being totally nice to me, as always. I filled them in about everything and uh, Charlotte had told me, except for the whole part about uh, my having snapped under pressure because of August being August's friend. Or the part about Julian's mom saying that Augie has special needs. Or the part about the school board. I guess all that I really told him was about how Julian had had a holiday party and managed to turn the whole grade against me. It just feels so weird, I said, to not have people talking to you, pretending that you don't even exist. <laughs> August started smiling. I think he knows what he's talking about, right? <laughs> you think? He said sarcastically. Welcome to my world. <laughs> I love Augie. Okay, sides. So here are the official sides, said Summer at the lunch table the next day. She pulled out a, full, a folded piece of loose leaf paper and opened it. And it had three columns of names. Jack's side, Julian's sides, and the neutrals. Jack's side had Jack, August, Reed, Max G, and Max W. Julian's sides had Miles, Henry, Amos, Simon, Tristan, Pablo, Nino, Isaiah, Luca, Jake, Tolan, Roman, Ben, Emmanuel, uh, Zell, I don't know, and Tommaso. And then the neutrals were Malik, Remo, Jose, Leaf, Leaf, Ram, Ivan, and Russell. Where did you get this? said Augie, looking over my shoulder as I read the list. Charlotte made it. Um, Summer answered quickly. She gave it to me last period. She said she thought you uh, should know who was on your side, Jack. Yeah, not many people, that's for sure, I said. Reed is, she said, and the two Maxes. Well, great, the nerds are on my side. <laughs> Don't be mean, said Summer. I think Charlotte likes you, by the way. Yeah, I know. Are you going to ask her out? <laughs> are you kidding? I can't, and now that everybody's acting like I have the plague... The second I said it, I realized I shouldn't have said it. There was this awkward moment of silence, and I looked at Augie. It's okay, he said. I knew about that. Sorry, dude, I said. I didn't know why. I didn't know they called it the plague, though, he said. I figured it was more like the cheese touch or something. Oh, yeah, like in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I nodded. The plague actually sounds cooler, he joked. Like someone could catch the black death of ugliness. <laughs> As he said this, he made air quotes. I think it's awful, said Summer, but Augie shrugged while taking a big sip from his juice box. Anyway, I'm not asking Charlotte out, I said. My mom thinks we're all too young to be dating anyway, she answered. And she's right, by the way, kids. What if Reed asked you out, I said. Would you go? I could tell she was surprised no she said why well, i was just asking i laughed you guys are way too young for any of this remember they're only in fifth grade here fifth grade people it's not real dating she shook her head and smiled well why what do you know nothing i'm just asking i said i actually agree with my mom she said i think we're too young to be dating i mean i just don't see what the rush is yeah, I agree, said August, which is kind of a shame, you know, with all those babes and keep, keep throwing themselves at me and stuff. He said this in such a funny way that the milk I was drinking came out of my nose when I laughed, which made us all totally crack up. <laughs> August's house. It was already the middle of January, and we still haven't even chosen what science fair project we're going to work on. I guess I kept putting it off because I just didn't want to do it. And finally, August was like, dude, we have to do this. So we went to his house after school. I was really nervous because I didn't know if August had ever told his parents about what we, 
now called the Halloween incident. And it turns out that the dad wasn't even home and the mom was out running errands. And I'm pretty sure from the two seconds I'd spent talking to her that Augie had never mentioned a thing about it. She was super cool and friendly toward me. When I first walked into August's room, I was like, Whoa, Augie, you have got a serious Star Wars addiction. He had ledges full of Star Wars miniatures and a huge The Empire Strikes Back poster on his wall. I know, right? He laughed. He sat down on a rolling chair next to his desk and I plopped down on a beanbag chair in the corner. And that's when his dog waddled into the room right up to me. Hey, he was on your holiday card, I said, letting the dog sniff my hand. She, he corrected me, Daisy, you can pet her, she doesn't bite. When I started petting her, she basically rolled over onto her back. She wants you to rub her tummy, said August. Okay, this is the cutest dog I've ever seen, I said, rubbing her stomach. I know, right? She's the best dog in the world, aren't you girly? As soon as she heard August's voice say that, the dog started wagging her tail and went over to him. Who's my little girly? Who's my little girly? Augie was saying as she licked him all over the face. I wish I had a dog, I said. My parents think our apartment's too small. Now I've started looking around at all the stuff in his room while he turned on the computer. Hey, you got an Xbox 360? Can we play? Dude, we're here to work on the science fair project. What, do you have a halo? Of course I have a halo. Can we pl please? Can we play? He had logged on to the Beecher website and was now scrolling down Miss Rubin's teacher page through the list of science fair projects. Uh, can you see from there? He said. I sighed and went to sit on the little stool that was right next to him. Cool iMac, I said. What kind of computer do you have? Dude, I don't even have my own room, much less my own computer. My parents have this ancient Dell that's practically dead. Oh, okay. Well, how about this one, he said, turning the screen in my direction so I would look. I made a quick scan of the screen uh, my eyes literally started blurring. Making a sun clock, he said. That sounds kind of cool. I leaned back. Can't we just make a volcano? <sighs> Everyone makes volcanoes. Duh, because it's easy, I said, petting Daisy again. What about how to make crystal spikes out of Epsom salt? Sounds boring, I answered. So why did you call her Daisy? He didn't look up from the screen. My sister named her. I wanted to call her Darth. Actually, technically speaking, her full name is Darth Daisy. But we never call her that. Darth Daisy? That's funny. Hi, Darth Daisy, I said to the dog who rolled onto her back again for me to rub her tummy. Okay, this is the one, said August, pointing to the picture on the screen of a bunch of potatoes with wires poking out of them. How to build an organic battery made out of potatoes. Now that's cool. It says here that you could power a lamp with it. And we could call it the spud lamp or something. What do you think? Uh, dude, that sounds way too hard. You know I'm not good at science. Oh, I'll be quiet. You do not. Uh, yeah, I do. I got 54 on my last test. <sighs> I'm not good at science. No. Uh, and that was only because you were still fighting and we were still fighting and I wasn't helping you. And I can help you now. And this is a good project, Jack. We've just got to do it. <sighs> Fine, whatever. I shrugged. Just then, there was a knock on the door. A teenage girl with long, dark, wavy hair poked her head inside the door. She wasn't expecting to see me. Uh, oh, hey, she said to the both of us. Hey, Via, said August, looking at the computer screen. Via, this is Jack. Jack, that's Via. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Oh, hey, she said, looking at me carefully. I knew the second Augie said my name that he had told her about the stuff I had said about him. I could tell from the way that she looked at me. In fact, the way she looked at me made me think she remembered from the first fr me from the day at the carnival on Amsworth Avenue all those years ago. Augie, I have a friend here I want you to meet, okay? She said. Uh, he's coming over in a few minutes. Oh, is he your new boyfriend? August teased. Via kicked the bottom of his chair. Just be nice, she said and left the room. Dude, your sister's pretty, I said.